good morning, good evening. <laughs> Sorry, Abbott. We got a small crew here tonight, but that's okay. We'll wait for our uh, our second runners uh, coming at 7.30ish. And they'll catch the tail end of everything. I'll, I'll try to make the sermon a little longer tonight. Stretch it out a little bit more, you know. Uh, actually, for the, what, for the prayers, what we're going to do, and I was going to do it last week and I forgot because of Ruth uh, in the hospital and everything and, you know, uh, trying to uh, cope with uh, the extra um, process of doing things. Um, for the prayers, after, so if the prayers are set up. If you look at the bulletin, it's I say something, then you say something. After you say something, we're going to pause for just a short bit, not very long, uh, and meditate on that thought of the prayers. And then we'll do that again. And so the prayers, uh, that's what it was intended to, and I, I apologize uh, from last week. But anyway, um, yeah, so for those joining us online who couldn't come, I'm at least you're watching us online. We appreciate that. So uh, let's uh, gather together uh, as we uh, say our invitation for worship. Let me switch to the, the PowerPoint so people can watch online, uh, can read too. And so <clears throat> the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. That's what Isaiah said. They shall mount upon the wings like eagles. They shall walk and not faint. Wait upon the Lord. Let's yes, let's rise together as we sing our first hymn. Him 87, Hail to the Lord's Anointed. God of all mercy and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we admit that we have become impatient with ourselves, each other, and sometimes with you. We have turned to our own way and have gone astray from your will, lost in sin, 
needing to become strong and courageous, we ask you, O Lord, to forgive our sin, cleanse our hearts, and keep us waiting, waiting for your promised coming of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Receive the good news God sent his son, the babe of Bethlehem, to show his infinite love and forgiveness for all people. Your sins are forgiven in the holy name of Christ, who came indeed and will come again. Wait upon the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Give us you may be seated. Our readings here are from multiple readings from Isaiah. Our first reading is from Isaiah 9, 6. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with young goat and a calf, and the lion and the fattened calf together, and a little child shall lead them. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my, all my holy mountain. For the earth shall fulfill the knowledge of the Lord as waters cover the sea. And he shall swallow up the mountains, covering that last cast over all peoples, and veil is that is spread over all nations. And he will swallow up forever the Lord God, shall wipe the tears from all faces, and reproach his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken." You keep in perfect peace those minds that stay in you, because he trusts in you. And the ransom of the Lord shall return to, Mount, to come to Zion with singing and everlasting joy, shall be upon their heads, and they shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and sighing flee, shall flee away. Comfort, comfort my people, says our God. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Our reading is from 1 John chapter 1, verses 1 to 5. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the, and, and, and the Word was God, and He was in the beginning with God. And all things were made through Him. And were not made with, and without him was not anything made that was made. In his life was life, and life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has covered it up. The word of the Lord. All right. Well, this season of Advent, we are reminded on how. We are to wait upon the Lord in faith and hope. And wait upon him until our Lord comes again. As mentioned in my message this past Sunday, hope is a word that involves a future fulfillment. As I apply the idea of wishing versus hoping context, if you remember my explanation of how we, we would never say, I hope to be hit by lightning, but it is probable to say, I wish to be hit light by lightning, knowing that it would never happen. Because that's the understanding of wish in its proper grammar use of the word. But we realize that hope is a powerful thing. It can help ones overcome health issue. It can encourage students in their need to work hard in their studies, knowing and hoping that they will graduate. They will get that degree. And they will move on to something else. Hope curves even our faith 
So we see things that are out of reach and even seem impossible, but yet is possible when found in hope. As we look at the message from Isaiah tonight, these scriptures, we consider the hope and the promise in which is fulfilled or will be fulfilled. So we can hope in it also. The first reading I want to look at is our first reading from Isaiah 9, 6. For us a child is born, to us the son is given. The government shall come upon his shoulders, his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. From the time of Abraham to Jesus is approximately 2,000 years. Give or take 8, 10 years, you know, depending on how you try to calculate the births and all that fun stuff that others enjoy doing. But according to my timeline, it's about 2,000. From King David to Jesus was approximately 1,000 years, which is pretty accurate because when you look at the, Genesis, uh, the record in the Matthew, you see that from this generation to that generation, from Abraham to David, it was 14. From David to Jesus was about 14, right? A thousand years. Then from Isaiah to Jesus was another 700 to 100, 800 years. So this prophecy from Isaiah presented here was not something that would be fulfilled in the time of Isaiah. But we see here the promise of God is not one that has a timeline of man, but is a time of God. God promised the people of Israel that that child would come, which would bear this wonderful name, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. Between the time of Isaiah and Jesus, there were many people that thought the Messiah would, had come and turned out not to be him. When Jesus did come, many people were not ready for him. In fact, it took the prophet John the Baptist to prepare the way for the work and ministry of Jesus, as promised, fulfilled in Scripture. Think about it. Time had passed so much that the idea of Messiah was there. They were eagerly looking for it, but in reality, the ministry of the Messiah, they were not prepared for what it meant. But this whole time we find in Scripture that people did hope for God, did hope for the Messiah. They knew that God would fulfill that promise. But it was, a, it was God's timing, not our plans or our timing. I think this is true just like today when we often see God working in our lives, the promises or the plans, the things that we hope for often take forever to come true. But we know that ultimately in those things, God fulfills. And even so, he still, there's a promise of this text here that is still not fully fulfilled because we are told in Revelation 3.11 that Jesus speaking, I am coming soon. Hold fast what you have so that no one may seize your crown. Well, it's been almost 2,000 years since he said that. And he's not come again. So do we lose hope? Do we, lose the, do we give up and say enough with this faith, enough of this God thing, and he's never going to come back, and I'm, I'm waiting for everything for no reason? Well, he doesn't say, you know, Give up everything in your life and do nothing until I come again. Only just hold fast to what you have. What? Fast to what? Hold fast to your faith, the promise, and the hope. And you will see is what is given to you. So let us hope and hope for Jesus coming again. Let us hold fast so that the faith we have in Jesus strengthen us. The second scripture I want to look at too is I want to jump ahead to verse 25 to 7, 8. Of Isaiah chapter 25. It says this, and he will swallow up the mountains and covering that is cast over all the peoples. That the veil that spread over all nations he will swallow up with death forever, and the Lord God will wipe out away tears of all faces, and the reproach of his people will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. Through the prophet Isaiah, God promised that death would be swallowed up forever. 
What a great joy, people, at that time, hearing that promise. Death, it would be swallowed up forever. They face death in front of them. They face an enemy always at their edge, going to come and conquer them with many uh, battles that would come in and be brought away, with kings arguing with other kings and battles would take place. Death was before them. I mean, the medicine we have today by far completely destroys everything else in history, especially the last hundred years since the age of penicillin. We have done so much for our health. And we don't fear death until I think COVID hit. I think when COVID hit the U.S., the idea of death became very for real that they never thought before. Maybe two or three generations that never had to deal with death the way that other parts of the world had dealt with because they don't have the vaccine for measles. They don't have the vaccine for many things and issues of disease that we have that we don't have. So death, all suddenly we faced it. The probability that you could catch this virus and it could very well end your life in a matter of a few days or a week. And so think about the promise of scripture here. If you heard it, that death would be swallowed up forever, that the tears you have in your faces will be wiped away. What joy and comfort would that bring? All this because no death would hold over us. Think of the freedom we could have and we could do. There are many TV shows that capture this concept of what would happen if we could not literally die and live forever. What our society would be from. It's very interesting the outtake of how dangerous we would be. More willing to push the limit. Maybe we wouldn't because we know that we won't die. However, we realize that this promise that God has made is not yet fully fulfilled. It's partially fulfilled, but not fully fulfilled. This promise of Jesus Christ through his death and resurrection is the beginning of this fulfillment. We find in 1 Peter 3.18, For Christ also suffered once for our sins, and the righteousness of the unrighteousness that he might bring us to God, being put to death in flesh, but made alive in spirit. So at first, this promise is ultimately, be, I mean, the beginning of the fulfillment is the fact that our spirit will live forever. Sure, we will die, whether we grow old. Hopefully, that's how we die. Or whether we fall asleep, and for whatever reason, the Lord takes us. Or whatever reason it may be, we know the promise of God holds us true in spirit. But as we wait in hope, knowing that we will also live forever, not only in spirit, but also in a physical means. We will free from death and hurt and pain and all we will know. This promise will ultimately fill when Christ comes again, as he does say again, is that he will wipe away every tear from your eyes. Death shall be no more. Neither things shall be mourning, no crying, no pain anymore. For former things have passed away. This promise will ultimately be fulfilled in Christ. Ultimately, when he comes again to judge the heavens and the earth, when he separates the goats and the sheep, when we're standing there in our beautiful white robes, knowing that we have overcome death through Christ. Our next scripture from Isaiah, this promise that I want to approach today, is Isaiah 26.3. You keep him perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Now this is kind of an odd scripture in itself. But while we are waiting in hope, we do put our trust in God, the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We trust in our minds that he has everything in control, which is a lot easier say than done. 
especially when something challenging stands before us, it discourages our hope. Things happen in life, it throws us off, either it's death of a family, a friend, an injury of ourself, or family, or friends. Maybe it's struggles in our marriage, or struggles with our children, even struggle with our parents. As you get older, you realize what I'm talking about. Maybe it's our job. Maybe it's the finances. Whatever it is, life happens as we are waiting. We cannot ignore that. Life is not perfect as we need Jesus to show us that even in suffering and pain, it is possible to remain faithful. As we have, have, we, as we have the stories of the saints who have suffered and struggled in life, helps us to encourage our faith to be hopeful. And so we wait upon the Lord in hope. We know at times we might feel discouraged, but we, through the Holy Scriptures, through the sacraments, through the body of the, of the church, we too will overcome these things. Now finally, as we wait in hope, we wait for Jesus to return again. And the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads, and they shall obtain gladness and joy and sorrow. Sighing shall flee away. That we will come together to join an everlasting choir. An everlasting celebration as we stand before the triune God clothed in white. Walking down the streets made of gold, the promises are fulfilled and we are part of that promise. That's our hope. Sure, we can hope for the little things. We can hope our children get a good job, they get a good education. Maybe they'll get married and have a good family, have a good friends. We can hope that as we get older ourselves, for some of us, we might see those grandchildren, and some of us already have. It's not wrong to hope for those little things as we walking the life of faith and the life on this earth. But our ultimate hope, our ultimate weight, is in Christ. Whether it's Christ going to take us home before he comes again, or whether he comes again to judge the living and the dead. Like I said earlier, it was 2,000 years before Abraham ever start to see, and only from heaven, knowing that the promise is being fulfilled. No, I'm not saying Christ is going to come again tomorrow. It hasn't been technically 2,000 years. But who knows, maybe it will. And maybe it will be another 1,000 or 2,000. I don't know. But it doesn't matter, because as we wait upon the Lord, we wait in hope knowing and trusting that in his promise of salvation, the promise of grace, that promise stands before us. And so we hope. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this promise. We thank you for the hope that we have in our faith that you would strengthen us by your Holy Spirit in times of discouragement and struggle. When the unknown comes before us, when things challenge us in what to do and what path to take, we hope to follow your will. And we hope to follow your plan. But as we walk that life, Father God, help us as we are innocent lambs, help us to be strong and wait in hope. We pray this in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hopefully we can nail this song a little bit better. So let's rise together with a joyful song and sing, Prepare the Royal Highway.
Join me as we confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate and was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. May be seated as we collect our offerings. Let's first offer a prayer for the offertory. Gracious Father, we thank you for all the gifts that you have given us in our life. As we return some of those gifts back to you, we ask that you would multiply them for the purpose of your will. We pray this in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Just a reminder as we pray, we're going to pause for a brief moment after every C line. So let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we wait for you. More than watch and wait for the morning. More than watchmen wait for the morning. Lead us in your truth and teach us. For you are the God of our salvation. O oh God, inspire us to wait for you faithfully. Serve you joyfully. And give to others generously. Gracious Lord, grant healing for the sick. Courage for the faint hearted. And the great clarity for all in the nay, in the valley of decision. Amen. We lift these to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. As we pray as our Lord Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now may the God give us the faith of Abraham, the hope of Isaiah, the joy of Elizabeth, and the gratitude of Zechariah. God will make us strong and courageous. As we wait upon the Lord. Amen. Let us rise together, which for him we know well, for joy to the world. Yes. <laughs> 